Hello. Good to see you folks. Um, today we're going to start talking about schedules of reinforcement. And uh, there's an infinite vari variety of different kinds of schedules. We could be talking about this for uh, uh, the rest of time. <laughs> but to uh, get into the topic, uh, let me ask you if you've ever wondered why some people seem to work really hard and other people don't. Other people have a very low response rate. Some people have a really high response. And it's not people. It's uh, lines of work. So one of the things that uh, I've been impressed with for many years now <laughs> is uh, how industrious and hardworking uh, trash pickup people are. You know, the trash truck goes through the neighborhood and uh, picks up the trash. And those guys don't dawdle. <laughs> they get the, uh, get uh, pick up the trash at one house, boom, they're off to the next house, get it there, go off to the next one, and, and on and on like that. <laughs> now, that's in contrast to, uh, I guess we don't have, <laughs> we don't have taxi lines anymore. But if you go to a hotel where there's a line of taxis, those taxi drivers <laughs> look pretty lazy. <laughs> uh, other sort of folks that uh, uh, appear not to be working really hard are security guards. <laughs> uh, and uh, on one occasion, I saw a delivery truck that wasn't, that was just parked for quite a while in the shade of a tree. But that's kind of unusual. <clears throat> Delivery people generally work at a pretty high rate. So <clears throat> why is it that in some uh, lines of work, people work at a high rate, and other lines of work, they work at a low rate? Well, it turns out that doesn't have to do with how much they get paid, uh, it has to do with the schedule of reinforcement. So the first slide uh, provides a definition for a schedule of reinforcement. And uh, it's a programmable rule that determines if you have a, a response that repeated over and over and over again, uh, the schedule of reinforcement determines which of those repetitions of the behavior actually gets reinforced, okay? And uh, the next slide uh, shows you uh, uh, how uh, information on schedules of reinforcement is typically displayed. Schedules of reinforcement were invented by uh, B.F. Skinner, and he did a lot of experiments with pigeons on all kinds of schedules of reinforcement. And these uh, experiments were published in a book uh, with his colleague, uh, Charlie Furster, uh, Furster and Skinner uh, schedules a reinforcement book, which runs nearly 800 pages. I mean, it's a massive book. And uh, uh, the book is just full of cumulative records. So what you see are cumulative records to display the performance on these various schedules of reinforcement. So what's a cumulative record? Well, it shows the accumulation of behavior on the y-axis as a function of time. So if uh, the cumulative record is flat as it is here between points A and B, that means that there have been no accumulations. So there's been no behavior. Between B and C, the subject is responding at a moderate rate. The curve climbs up. Between C and D, it climbs up at a steeper rate. So there's a higher rate of behavior. And after D, it, the subject quits again. So that's the cumulative record. Okay, what kinds of schedules are there? Well, we're going to talk about simple schedules today, and there are two categories of these. The first of these is shown in the next slide, which are ratio schedules. And in a ratio, ratio schedule, the only criterion for which response gets reinforced is how many responses have already taken place. And if that number is fixed from one trial to the next, it's called a fixed ratio. If that number varies from one trial to the next, it's called a variable ratio. The continuous reinforcement, or CRF, is a special case of the fixed ratio where every response gets reinforced. And you might think 
that uh, if you want to uh, generate the most behavior, you should reinforce every occurrence of the response. If you thought that, you would be wrong. <laughs> A continuous reinforcement schedule does not produce the highest rate of behavior. The next uh, uh, slide shows the cumulative record for uh, both a fixed ratio schedule and a variable ratio schedule. And what you see in a fixed ratio schedule is that there is a steep portion of the curve, which is called the ratio run. That's when the subject is actually completing uh, the ratio requirement. So here the, a fixed ratio was 120. The pigeons had to uh, uh, peck 120 times before they got access to food. Food is indicated by the downward deflection of the curve there. And so once they get started, they make those 120 pecks uh, without pause, just boom, 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 boom. And then they get the food and then they quit. <laughs> the quitting part is called the post-reinforcement pause. Actually, uh, the term post-reinforcement pause is a bit misleading. The pause doesn't occur because the pigeon has just gotten reinforced. Rather, it occurs because the next ratio run is going to require a lot uh, of uh, responses. So the post-reinforcement pause reflects sort of a reluctance to get started on the next job. So it's a, a, a form of procrastination, if you will. The graph to the right shows responding on a variable ratio schedule. With a variable ratio schedule, there are no pauses, and uh, uh, you, you get a fairly high and steady rate of responding. In this, these are both curves taken from uh, the Furster and Skinner book, Schedules of Reinforcement, uh, the variable ratio. Bird, in this case, had to make, on average, 360 pecks to get a piece of food. So that's not a high rate of payoff. But he's working like uh, uh, like a bat out of hell. He's working very at a very high rate, nevertheless. All right. So those are ratio schedules. How about interval schedules? Now, interval schedule is a lot more complicated. So here's a uh, diagram for an interval schedule. Uh, here, time is a factor. In ratio schedules, the schedule doesn't take time into account. So the only thing that you need to take into account number of responses. Here, time makes a difference. And the sense in which time makes a difference is that it takes a certain amount of time for the reinforcer to become available. So uh, consider, for example, uh, if you're making jello, uh, you make, uh, you boil the water, you pour in the jello mix and get it all stirred up, and then you put it in the fridge. When can you enjoy the fruits of your labor? not for a certain amount of time. That's the setup time. So in this case, going into the fridge to get your jello to eat is the response. And during the setup time, uh, doesn't matter how often you check the jello, it's not going to be ready. But once the uh, jello has uh, finished gelling, <laughs> there's jello gels. Once the jello has become firm, you don't have to take it out of the fridge right away to enjoy it. You can take whenever you uh, uh, open the fridge after that, you can get the reinforcer there. So you don't have to make the response right at the end of the setup time. You can make it at some other time. So what is the uh, cumulative record for uh, uh, ver uh, interval schedules? The next slide shows you two versions of interval schedules. One is a fixed interval schedule, and in this instance, uh, the uh, fixed interval setup time is four minutes. So it takes four minutes before the reinforcer becomes available, and then the next response gets reinforced. Uh, on the, uh, in the other uh, curve, cumulative record on the, on the right is a variable interval schedule. So the setup time varies from trial to trial. If the setup time is always fixed, you get uh, the kind of pattern shown on the left, which shows a post-reinforcement fa pause followed by a gradual acceleration into the end of the interval. With a variable interval schedule, you don't have these uh, uh, predictable pauses. You don't have post-reinforcement pause. So uh, ratio schedules, interval schedules, kind of looks like either one. 
uh, can uh, produce uh, pretty similar behavior with fixed schedules. You get post reinforcement pauses with variable schedules. You don't. Uh, this raises a really uh, interesting question and namely are interval schedules fundamentally different from ratio schedules uh, or are they fundamentally the same? What, the underlying behavioral mechanisms, are they uh, pretty much the same or are they different? The next slide uh, shows the results of a very complicated experiment done by George Reynolds. And you probably don't know about George Reynolds uh, because of this experiment, uh, but you may have heard about Psychology Today. Well, George Reynolds was the guy who uh, founded Psychology Today. But before he founded the, uh, that popular journal, popular magazine, he did a bunch of pigeon experiments. And he was interested in this question of whether uh, ratio schedules are fundamentally different from interval schedules. Now, to make that comparison, you have to do some tricky things to make sure that uh, the overall rate of reinforcement is the same and there's some number of complicated control conditions you have to satisfy. I'm not going to go into those details, but here is uh, after having uh, designed the schedules so that they're comparable in every possible way, with the exception that one pigeon got a ratio schedule and the other got an interval schedule. Here are the results. What you see is that the variable ratio bird responds at a much higher rate than the bird that's reinforced on a variable interval schedule. And what is significant about that is that the number of reinforcers that each bird receives is identical under the procedures that Reynolds designed. So uh, I think this is a really uh, mind-blowing kind of uh, result that gives you a lot of insight into behavior. Uh, it's not the amount of reward that you get that determines how hard you work. Uh, here, the two birds got the same number of act, uh, peer, uh, food opportunities. Uh, it's not the number of rewards you get. It's not how much you get paid, but it's the schedule of reinforcements that's used to dole out those payments. So what's the conclusion from this kind of work? Well, the conclusion, it turns out, is something that managers are really interested in. Why? Well, because if you manage a business and you have a bunch of employees, you have to pay them. And if the business is going to make managers and businesses generally try to make profit, right? That's capitalism. You try to make as much profit as you can. If you want to make a lot of profit, you can't be paying your employees uh, uh, all of the money that the company earns. And, and unfortunately, and uh, this is not, uh, you know, I don't want to get into that, but businesses tend to pay as little as they can get away with. Then the question is, if you want your employees to work hard, and you don't want to pay them very much, what are you going to do? What kind of payout schedule are you going to use? And businesses have become very much interested in this just in the last 10 or 15 years. It's amazing how uh, the compensation and pay systems in businesses has been revolutionized in the past 15 years. Amazon is at the forefront of, of these innovations. And what's the innovation? Well, the innovation is something that George Reynolds discovered, <coughs> probably, oh, I think about 40 years ago. The, the innovation comes from that Reynolds experiment. The innovation is to pay people on a ratio schedule which means that you're paying them for the number of responses they make. And that's how uh, trash collectors get paid. Trash collectors are on a fixed ratio schedule. What's the ratio? It's the number of houses they have to uh, pick up the tr 
crashed from on their run. If they're on a ratio schedule, which means that uh, if they work expeditiously, uh, they're going to finish their route sooner and get uh, to the end of their day and they can relax. If they uh, work uh, more efficiently and finish their routes earlier, they're not given another list of houses to go get trash from, right? They're done for the day. They're on a fixed ratio. Fixed ratio generates this pause followed by the ratio run. Uh, in contrast, we talked about security guards. I don't know what schedule of reinforcement security guards are on, but it's certainly not a ratio schedule. It's got more, it's got strong interval components. And uh, whenever you build interval components into a schedule of beha uh, behavior, schedule of reinforcement, I should say, you're driving response rates down. So <clears throat> that's my story for today. And uh, if you are going into business and you want to be successful, you may go into management. I guarantee you, you're going to be worry worrying and thinking about schedules of reinforcement. And when you do, you should revisit the Reynolds experiment and Charles Furster and Skinner's massive volume on schedules of reinforcement. Thanks a lot, folks. See you next time.